All right, this is Richard Roop, and we're going to be covering the five reasons why real estate investors fail. And in this video, we're going to cover, cover reason number one. And the number one reason real estate investors fail today is they have an ineffective investing strategy or approach. You know, it's hard to get to the right place when you're headed down the wrong path. And most real estate investors are focused on strategies that are too outdated, too difficult, or too risky for today's market conditions. So here what we're going to do is we're going to cover and explore seven different real estate money-making strategies. We're going to cover the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right? And we're going to wrap this up with some great solutions for you to achieve your financial goals using creative real estate as a money-making strategy. So a very common real estate investing strategy is flipping. And you can call this retail flipping. So this is normally going to be on pretty houses. And what it is, is you buy a house for a good price, a low price, and then you resell it quickly for more money, creating a spread. Now, this relies on finding a qualified buyer to cash you out. And it also re relies on finding motivated sellers with equity. They have to have equity so you can buy it right, so that there's enough room in there for you to get involved. You have to buy it below retail. And then actually what you want to do is you want to sell it below retail as well, because you need some type of marketing advantage if you're going to be retailing houses. So the biggest challenges of this particular model, which most people realize, I think, today, that this is an ineffective business model, but unfortunately there are people out there telling you you can make money this way. But the biggest challenge is, number one, a transactional funding. You've got to somehow buy the deal, fund the deal, and then you need to resell the deal. Uh, getting uh, a new loan for your buyer, you may have seasoning problems. A lot of the banks today, they want a seller to own a property for a specific period of time before you can uh, get new financing on the property. They're afraid of lender fraud. Another challenge is the lack of desperate sellers without better options. So we're talking about pretty houses, and a lot of people with houses that are nice uh, would typically just put their house on the market with a real estate agent. So why would they sell it to you at a discount if they have time or other options? So in this case, you know, it's hard to find someone in that particular situation where they'll give you a good discount on the property and then you have to buy it at a, a, a price that makes sense, uh, a price that you can get the financing, the transactional funding on it, and then you're going to turn around and you know, resell it. Um, now, who are you going to resell it to? Well, typically you're going to go after uh, a qualified buyer. So another challenge is there's a lack of qualified buyers. The uh, banking industry is having challenges. I think they'll continue to have challenges, and that's what's affecting the housing market today. Another challenge is retail buyers are very picky um, because they can buy any property that's out there on the market because they are qualified and they tend to be kind of picky and hard to deal with, all right? Another challenge is it's a limited exit. You're just going to buy it for cash and then sell it for cash. And then uh, there's some problems with flipping properties, and that comes down to income tax consequences. If you are buying and flipping properties, you're gonna, uh, you might su get surprised with a big tax bill at the end of the year because the profits that you generate are going to be treated as ordinary income. And, an, and another big challenge is that there's only one payday. So once you buy a house and sell a house, you have to go out and buy another house and sell another house to create any income. So just one payday. Well, if you're going to try this strategy, I can give you a few tips. Number one, uh, sell, you have to sell on price if you're not selling on terms. So that means you have to buy it right, buy it below retail, and then you have to sell it at a great price so you have a marketing advantage. Um, 
You want to get the house in top condition to please those picky buyers. And then you may want to get the exposure of listing it on the MLS. And I would suggest using a flat fee agent listing if you can get it. It's getting harder and harder these days to find someone who will do a flat fee listing. Okay, a flat fee listing means that you pay a fee, a flat fee to list it, and then you offer like a 3% commission to the selling agent. Well, the solutions to this particular investing model is to avoid it, <laughs> okay? I would, I would rather you uh, buy with long-term, fixed, low-rate, non-bank financing, okay? And that's going to solve a lot of those challenges. You also want to be able to hold or resell with owner financing. So you want to be able to hold it as a rental for income and, and equity growth or go ahead and sell it with owner financing and not rely on banks. So the main solution is to focus on the ultimate strategy for buying and selling houses. And, of course, uh, that is going after free and clear houses and negotiating long-term 0% financing and funding those deals with none of your own money. You have plenty of time and you have plenty of exits. And the only reason to flip properties is to get some quick cash. And using the ultimate strategy, you can get the quick cash every time you buy a house using the ultimate strategy. The next real estate investing model that is kind of popular is wholesale flipping. There's a lot of people out there promoting how to wholesale properties. And these are typically going to be ugly houses because you have to really get a deep discount on these houses. You're going to buy them low, uh, all cash, at a very cheap price, and then you're going to resell it at a low price to another investor, someone who wants to take on this property. Now, it could be a pretty house, but normally it's going to be an ugly house that needs a lot of work. Now, another thing you can do as far as wholesale flipping is you could get a house under contract and sell your contract. So that's wholesale flipping. Now, by the way, as we go through these seven strategies, all of these strategies are useful, but to focus on just any one of them is kind of a challenge. You want to become a transaction engineer. So, for example, if you're using the ultimate strategy, you might go ahead and flip properties and wholesale properties along the way. But if you were just focusing on flipping properties, you have a bit, some big challenges. One, there's a lot of competition for the best deal. Most investors are taught, buy cheap, flip to other investors. Now, another challenge is a lack of wholesale buyers. Before the market changed, there was more wholesale buyers uh, but with all the challenges that we're having with the banks and uh, getting uh, retail buyers financed, uh, there's a lot of wholesale buyers are out of business. Uh, there's also a lack of hard money available, and wholesalers rely on hard money to buy their to buy their cheap deals from you. And the the hard money lenders have a stricter and stricter guideline. They're they're loaning on less loan to value, so you can't borrow as much money. And it's just harder to fund these deals with hard money. Another challenge is a lack of qualified buyers, as we discussed on retailing. And wholesalers rely on qualified buyers. If they buy a house, fix it up, they're going to retail that property and sell it to a qualified buyer. That's why a lot of wholesalers are out of business. Wholesalers also rely on that new bank financing to sell. So they're looking for qualified buyers who can get loans. Any investment strategy today where you're relying on a bank to buy or sell or refinance, uh, you're out of control, and I think the challenges around in that arena will get uh, bigger and bigger. So let's avoid that. Um, another big challenge is leaving too much profit on the table. If you buy, can buy so cheap, and then you can turn around and flip it to another investor who's going to make some money, uh, you're probably leaving a lot of profit on the table. It'd be better to be in a position where you can keep all that profit yourself. If it's a good deal for another investor, why isn't it a good deal for you? And so we need some solutions to make that happen. Uh, one of the reasons why you would flip a deal is because you can't fund it or you got some short-term money you have to pay back. You don't have enough time. 
and you're just going to flip it for some quick cash. So you have a limited exit plan typically for flipping. You're just going to, you know, buy it and sell it. And you're going to ha- you must perform quickly because normally any money you've raised to acquire the deal um, needs to be paid back within a year or less, six months to a year. That's typical hard money. If you get a contract that you're going to flip, you're going to have to flip it before the deadline on your contract. And again, there's some income tax consequences from flipping deals. Um, it's all considered ordinary income, and that that's going to take a big bite out of your profits. And again, it's only one payday. You you flip a property, you got to go flip another one. So that's wholesale flipping. You can make money at that, and you can continue to make money at that, but to rely on that as a a main investing model uh, is very limited, and there's a lot of challenges. All right, let's, if you are going to flip properties, uh, ugly houses, flip to other investors, the, some tips I can give you would be you want to build a wholesale buyer's list. So the more people you can flip your properties to, the more success you're going to have. Next, you want to become active in your real estate investing club because that's uh, w- where you're going to find uh, a source of buyers. And so you want to become active in your real estate investing club and get to know a lot of other investors. Uh, another tip, if you you can raise the cash to buy the property and repair the property with longer-term private money. That's going to help you out. You'll be less under the gun uh, to get it paid off. But the real solutions are uh, what you want to do is you want to target homeowners with equity. Now, we're going to talk about the ultimate strategy as an investment model, and as you know, that model is targeting homeowners with equity. So you're going to find out, you're going to see that a lot of the solutions to any of these models is just to do what you normally would do if you focus mostly on the ultimate strategy for buying and selling houses. So why are you going to target homeowners with equity? Because you have to buy the house cheap. You have to capture equity in the deal. And so it's hard to wholesale flip a house that doesn't have a lot of equity. Um, Also, You want to avoid relying on just a wholesale buyer. You want to have multiple exits. You want to be able to buy low and then hold for cash flow. I mean, if you can buy a house at 50 cents on the dollar and sell it for 60 cents on the dollar, you can make a little cash spread there and some quick cash. But with the ultimate strategy, you can buy at 50 cents on the dollar. You can borrow 60 cents on the dollar, put 10 you know, put some cash in your pocket, and then have it a positive cash flow for many, many years. So one of the exits using the ultimate strategy is to hold the property for cash flow, even if you pay all cash cheap. Uh, you want to be prepared uh, to hold if you can't flip it as is. And another exit you can have would be to do the minimum remodel instead of a full remodel and then sell on sweat equity. So you buy a house that you would normally flip, but go ahead and uh, do a small remodel and then sell using the ultimate strategy, using creative terms. You can sell on the sweat equity program. That's allowing your buyer to trade as part or all of their down payment fixing up the house. Okay, so that's a creative exit. Uh, If you can fund all or part of your purchase price with 0% financing, then you're going to have uh, a number of different exits. You can pay more for the property, and you can get more deals done. And uh, instead of coming up with all the cash to pay the seller, if you can get the seller to take part or even all of their money with 0% owner financing, uh, that's going to solve some of the issues. Um, Don't wholesale flip keep all the profits yourself. That would be my number one solution. If I get a great deal, I'm not going to flip it to another investor. I'm going to keep it because I'm going to I'm, I'm giving away way too much money uh, on the table if I when I flip a property. And again, why flip a property for 5, 10, 15, 20 grand when I can pull out 5, 10, 15, 20 grand buying a property using the ultimate strategy? All right, another 
uh, investing strategy that real estate investors think is a good approach, which I do not agree with. 